Yeah, it's right to have a squad and blind horse from computer up. Cucumber software, they have plenty of love on And they're going to be talking about managing employee diversity at work. So welcome to Claire and Brian with managing employee diversity at work. Thank you. Accident. It was, I mean, I was a pretty good snowboarder, I was a competitor, 
um, and I was on like a really easy run and I just lost my lost my edge on my snowboard and I had a tumble for about 150 meters um, and yeah, ended up in the chair. Um, I spent about maybe three months in hospital and then a bit in rehabilitation afterwards. Um, and it was a big switch, of course. Um, uh, it was a T4-5 break, they call it. Um, there's a just about um, mid-thoracic. And um, so basically from here on down, I have you know, no feeling, no control. Um, and so my balance and everything was affected. So it took quite a long time for me to um, get my head around my situation. Um, it actually took about two years for me to, to finally get my head around what had happened and um, how I'm going to move forward. Um, but at the time when I was just getting out of the hospital, um, we were looking for accommodation. Um, we lived in Banff, which is you know, in a mountain town, and um, not a lot of accommodation there was wheelchair accessible. Um, so we scratched that idea. We did end up getting an apartment for a little while, but it wasn't quite ideal. So. We had to move to Calgary, and again, the adjustment to, to life was, was not easy. Um, October 27, 2007 um, was when Ethan was born, and that was our first child. Um, and it was a mixed bag of emotions for all of us, really. Um, we were, I mean, I was pretty happy. I had a son, I had a family. Um, but on the other side, you know, with, with the son came kind of a few scary things. <coughs> Um, I don't know, how would I support him? Um, would I be a good father? Um, how am I going to pay for college? You know, like, I can do most of the things that most fathers could with their type of children. Um, and a lot of the days I was down, actually, I was probably down for about a yeah, good year um, after you were born. In January 2008, I started a two year reflexology degree, which is Totally different from computer science, which I'm what I'm in now. <laughs> um, and I did this remotely. It was actually through a company in Nelson, um, Aromaflex. Um, I did this remotely from Canada. Um, I chose reflexology because I thought it was something that I could still do. Um, I could just sit in my chair and massage people's feet, and you know, it'd be pretty easy. Um, I wouldn't have to, you know, go to an employer. I could employ myself, so. Um, I relieve a lot of anxiety that I had from even approaching employers because um, I could manage it all myself. And I didn't have to deal with any, you know, rejection from an employer just in case, you know, they didn't see me who, for who I was. In January 2009, we moved back to New Zealand. Um, I was about a year into my reflexology degree. Um, and not long after we moved here, um, I actually saw a, an ad for computer science degree pathway at the Bay of Plenty Polytech, and it was in conjunction with the Waikato University. And I saw the ad, and then the next day I gave him a call, had a chat with um, Karen Phillips, and about a week later I was actually enrolled. Um, when I was talking to Karen, I had you know a million questions, of course, like you know, are you wheelchair accessible? How am I going to manage? Um, it was actually really easy because the only thing that really needed to do was just give me a parking spot. That was you know, close to an elevator so I could get to my classes. <laughs> so it was actually a lot easier than I had thought and it was a lot easier than they had thought. You know, they didn't have to do all that much special for me. But at the end of the first year, um, it was a good year. I'm in the top student award. That means I had the highest marks of all students in uh, computer science. Um, had the highest overall grade average. And I was pretty happy, of course. I worked hard. Um, and I guess I had something to prove. Um, I had something to prove to myself. And I had something to prove to other people as well. Um, just to show that you know, the wheelchair didn't mean all that much. It was more about the person inside. Um, the second year, second year was the same thing, one top student again. Um, the Polytech actually hired me on as a network technician at that point. Um, it was a part-time job, which was kind of perfect for me. Um, I was able to weave my classes in and around my work schedule. Um, so I worked and um, went to school at the same place, and it was pretty much ideal for me. I worked out great. And it was about 
about this time too that it's actually started to feel kind of normal. You know, I was doing normal things. I was going to school, going to school. Um, I had a job. You know, it wasn't quite enough to pay the bills, but you know, at least it was a job. And um, yeah, I thought I was, you know, progressing and moving on with life. I even tried a bit of sit skiing and a bit of skydiving. And I still tried to continue with the camping and fishing and hiking. Um, yeah, and I think, I think just having the job and um, yeah, had a real key role at that point in time in my life. Again, at the end of the second year, I won the top student award again. The uh, top student award again, sorry. Um, Ethan was three at the time, so my son was three. Um, and yeah, everything was going pretty good. Um, it was about this time too that I kind of looked back at my career choices and I was, you know, weighing out, wow, I was doing reflexology, you know, now I'm doing computer science. Um, and I thought, wow, what a great choice that was. <laughs> So in the last year of uni, um, I was asked to be the systems architect in the mix and match competition held at the Bay of Plenty Polytech. Now, mix and match is a it's an opportunity for high school students to be able to show their IT skills. And what they have to do is have to take an open source data source and build a user interface on top of it, um, and they get judged by a panel of judges. And it's not just about the software; you know, it's about the marketing, um, bringing that to uh, the people. Um, they get judged on um, all range of criteria. But it was actually at the Mix and Mash competition that I met Jody Tipping, who was the owner of Cucumber Software. For a few months after that, I mean, life was full of ups and downs, of course. Um, all the ups because you yeah, had school um, and the family, but most of the downs was the realization that, you know, I wasn't making enough to you know, support a family. I wasn't. Um, couldn't buy a house. Um, I had all the same, same negative emotions and anxiety that I had, you know, several years back. And I was asking myself a lot of questions too, like when I'm done university or when I go out to a prospective employer, are the people, you know, going to take pity on me because of the wheelchair? Are they only going to see the wheelchair? Um, what? What exactly are they going to judge me on? Are they going to judge me for my merits? And you know, am I going to have a fair chance to, to prove myself? So near the end of the school year, I got in touch with Jody from Cucumber Software. She said there might be an opportunity for me. Um, what they wanted to do was mentor someone at the university. So I went in for an interview. I showed them my year-end project from uni. Um, and that was a system that um, automatically read statistics out of an email and uploaded to a database. Um, she was pretty impressed with that. Um, a couple of the senior developers were pretty impressed with the software application as well. Um, and yeah, four months later, after I graduated, I actually had my first real salary job. Thank you. So there's a little bit about um, Brian's story up until the point he was employed by Cucumber, and I'm going to take you through some of the things that we could have obviously done a little bit better to make Brian's introduction into the team smoother, and some of the things we did that really worked and helped kind of create a culture in the organisation. Right from um, Brian's early interactions with Cucumber, it was clear that he was setting the bar pretty high, and some of our senior developers don't even send us snippets of their code, which Brian was doing. Um, so already he was saying, I'm really passionate about this, I really want this, so what more can you want from the employer's perspective? A couple of the quick lessons I'll take you through, um, and these sound really obvious and some of them are, but some of them are the mistakes that we've made along the way. So firstly, um, I think it's really important to view the world from Brian's perspective as early on as possible. We thought we had done this, but we had done a pretty shallow job of this. Um, and, this, and this does sound obvious, and there were some obvious things, like we had our lunchroom and the mezzanine floor at Cucumber, obviously that wasn't going to work, so we quickly moved that downstairs before we arrived. Um, but there were real basic things that we missed, like the coffee cups being in the cupboard above the sink, or the Friday night beers being on the top shelf of the fridge. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Coffee, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and being really new and being Brian's first you know, full-time role. He was quite shy about coming forward about 
all that stuff, so it took way longer than it needed to for some of the little things to get addressed. I actually just thought he liked his Star Wars and I even brought it to the business. <laughs> <laughs> Um, in a similar vein, I think the little changes we've made have had a really big impact. Um, we've got two entr entrances into the into the office at Kikapa. We've got the main door that most people come through and then we've also got an entrance which we call and it is on the door the Geeks entrance. Now that's a compliment to developers, so don't feel like I'm <laughs> putting them down. Um, Brian's desk is right next door to the Geeks entrance, so it's easy for him to get from his car into his desk. But what we didn't realise, and it took our finance manager actually seeing him come into work one day to clip, there's a lip on that door, and Brian would have to kind of wear himself up and curl himself over whilst holding the door open, which was crazy. Uh, but again, none of us realised that that was the case. So, less than $500, a couple of hours of a maintenance man, um, and some really positive impact to Brian. The other thing that I think is um, quite a nice story, and one that we were completely naive about, was Brian being in a wheelchair, we assumed that he would sit in his wheelchair at work. Um, and quite early on, we had a number of new people in the team, and they were going out shopping for new chairs, and so Brian went with them, and was really surprised that we would have least in this you know, special chair that he can actually be more comfortable in his day to day life in. Um, but that's what I think that means the little things do add up really quickly. Um, at Cucumber, we really believe that diversity of all kinds is a good thing, um, even if it does come in the form of bad sea party costumes. <laughs> uh, in the digital team alone, um, out of 28 people, we've got seven nationalities. We've got people from Canada, Brazil, Argentina, Ukraine, UK, Holland, and New Zealand. Um, so we're really used to diversity and, and really do believe it adds value to the organisation. Um, Brian being in a wheelchair is just part of this unique mix, it's no different. From a client's perspective, our clients have been really receptive to Brian coming on board. Um, he's currently doing some work with one of the government organisations locally, um, who obviously have some criteria to meet around their premises, but they've used this as an opportunity to say, we don't just want to meet those criteria, we actually want to understand what it's like from your perspective and make some positive changes, which I think is really a good thing. Finally, and again, this is obvious, and I think the previous speakers have spoken about this, is it all comes back to culture, and culture being the key. Uh, one thing we did really early on, well actually not as early on as we should have, um, we did it earlier this year, was host a game of wheelchair rugby against Brian's wheelchair rugby team. Um, and this was a great way for our team to appreciate what the reality is for Brian in his everyday life, bar the kind of smashing into each other. <laughs> um, but it also did that in a really fun way, so the team really got into it. It didn't stop them from complaining the next day about how sore their arm muscles were, um, but I think it went a long way to reinforcing the culture in the, in the organisation. Before I pass you back to Brian for some final words of wisdom, I've got a couple of things to add. Um, to the potential employers in the room, I really encourage you to open your minds to employing someone with a disability, um, or you stand to overlook some really positive people and some real stars. Um, and secondly, Brian, thank you for agreeing to speak with me. Um, sharing your journey with these fine people was probably not easy. But also thank you for taking the risk of sending us your code. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so I guess some, some last minute advice for you know, any potential employers, you know, from my view. Um, if you are approached by someone who's got a disability, um, you've got to keep in mind that a disability is such a wide range, you know. It could, you know, be someone missing a leg to, you know, to someone being a tetraplegic and not able to do anything, you know, in such a wide range. So, I mean, don't discount them just because they have a disability, because nine times out of ten, you know, their brain is all there, they're just fine, you know, and they should, well, I mean, they wouldn't apply for the job unless they thought they were already capable of performing that role. Um, try to think about the person, you know, um, about their disability. Um, their disability will have nothing to do with, you know, how they perform and how they execute their job. Um, try to look at their talents and their accomplishments. Um, don't worry about how you're going to accommodate them. Um, like at Cucumber, you know, a couple of little things help, but you know, we didn't worry about you know, how to accommodate me. Those things just fell into place um, as time went on. Um, and if you do, you know, um, consider uh, someone with a disability to your business, and um, you will be rewarded. You know, that person will be. 
you know, pretty dedicated and loyal to just be, you know, happy to have a job, you know, happy that you can play them and you thought about them as an equal and as a person and not as someone who's different. Yeah. Thank you guys for all your time.